OK, let's start thinking about sketching uh, cubics. OK, so from uh, these factorised forms. Now, before we get on with that, let's go back to a quadratic and spot what we can do with a quadratic and see if we can utilise the same methods to sketch these. So let's say that I've got y is equal to x plus 4, x minus 2. OK, let's say I was asked to sketch that. Now the first thing that I can identify is where it crosses the x-axis. I can see that it's crossing the x-axis at minus 4 and plus 2. So, <clears throat> so minus 4 and positive 2. Now, I could also identify where it is crossing the y-axis. And I can see that from, if I substitute 0 in, I get 4 times minus 2. Or just look at multiplying the final numbers together. 4 times minus 2 is minus 8. So it's crossing the y-axis at minus 8 down here. So the parabola would look something like this. OK, not a very good one, but there you are. OK, and you can see that the vertex is to the left of the y-axis here. So that is how we can use the information of the factorised form in order to guide us in sketching cubics. So if we look at the first one, so in the same way we can identify that this curve must be crossing the x-axis at minus 2, positive 3, and minus 1. So minus 2, minus 1, and 3. So minus 2, minus 1, and 3. Now, we can also identify where it is crossing the y-axis by looking at 2 times minus 3 times 1, so minus 6. So it's crossing the y-axis at minus 6. Now, because it will be a positive x cubed, you can see that by multiplying through the x's. That means that it's starting in the bottom left and working its way up to the top right. So it's starting down here. So if it's starting down here, the first thing it must do is cross through at minus 2. Now, because it must cross through the x-axis at minus 1 also, it will have to reverse itself to go through minus 1. It must then go all the way down and cross through at minus 6 on the y-axis. And then in order to then cross at 3, it then has to reverse direction and come back and go through 3 on the x-axis. And that is a sketch of the first one, number 1. Let's look at number 2. So number 2. We can see that it's crossing the x-axis at minus 4, at 2, and 1. So minus 4, 1, and 2. So minus 4 here, 1, and 2. Now where is it crossing the y-axis? That's 4 times minus 2 times minus 1, so that's 8. So 8 is up here. So what must be happening? Now, because if I multiply through the x's, I will get a positive x cubed. So it must start in the bottom left again. So bottom left to go through minus 4. OK. Now, it needs to go through 8. But in order to reverse direction, the vertex here must be to the left of the y-axis. So it must do something like that. OK. It must then come back down in order to go through 1 on the x-axis and then reverse direction very quickly in order to go through 2 on the, on the x-axis and then back up again. OK, so it's really doing a dot to dot, but making sure you think about where the turning points are. Where is the curve going to turn? Let's look at the third one. Now, number three, 
we have something interesting going on. We've got this x minus 2 squared. Now, already we can identify that it must be crossing the x-axis at 2 and 1. So here's 1, here's 2. Now, we could also look at where is it crossing the y-axis. Now, we've got two brackets with minus 2 here. So we've got minus 2 times minus 2 times minus 1, and that's minus 4. So minus 4 is down here. Now, if ever we got um, an x minus 2 squared bracket um, when we were doing parabolas, so if I was asked to sketch y is equal to x plus 4 squared, for example, rather than y is equal to x plus 4, x minus 2, I know that that is crossing the x-axis at minus 4, but the parabola brushes the x-axis at minus 4. OK? So in exactly the same way, the cubic brushes the x-axis at 2. Okay, So if the curve is starting in the bottom left, as it must do again because we're going to have a positive x cubed, starting in the bottom left, it must go through minus 4, go up through 1. Okay, I haven't made this very curved yet. But then it must turn around and brush the x-axis at 2. and then shoot off like so. So you can see that all three of these have effectively the same sort of shape. They've got a minimum and a maximum point each time. It's just identifying where are they crossing the x-axis, where are they crossing the y-axis, doing a bit of dot to dot as you go. Okay, They're not too tricky once you get the hang of it.